to the board. Good evening. Community. Good evening. I want to speak to the board also like to speak to the community. Because without you, none of what we're talking about can happen. We need to support your goodwill and your support and above all, your prayers. I think everybody who knows me knows what my position is on moving our schools to another county. Yes. How many people here are in for that, if I may see your hands? <laughs> well, any time a board can continue to press for what is not in the best interest of children, in the best interest of the community, right. as trustees and people that we should trust and depend upon to restore excellence in public education. And at a time when we strength and sacrifice are being asked of every citizen, the American, the uh, community, and the public will find it hard, as I do, to accept a situation in which a tiny handful of school board members who does not listen can show such, such utter contempt for the interests of 100,000 Americans, which constitutes yep. District 227 and its schools. I was very impressed with the new principal. If nothing but for height alone. <laughs> There's great influence in people with height. Yeah. My good friend, Dr. Thomas, I have not been so impressed since Dr. Came, Thomas came on board. And I think he may be responsible for getting some people in leadership roles that count and are about making a difference Restoring excellence in public education in our community and make a, making a difference in our community. The time is way too late, but it's never too late to do well. I can't tell you the formula for success, but I can tell you the formula for failure. <laughs> Try to please everybody. We, you can't please everybody. Pleasing everybody means there is no accountability in these schools. Pleasing everybody means people don't have to do their job. There's no way we can improve and restore excellence in public education and drive what is best in the best interest of children and this community in the absence of accountability. Thank you, President. To restore excellence in our schools, either we, the school board, and the school district will do this, or we will do nothing as follows. Begin with a common vision and cooperating with the superintendent and embracing the school board's oath, role, and common duties in improving educational outcomes for all students. Number two, conduct a needs assessment So Dr. Morgan, Number three, identify, could I get, have one more minute, young lady? We have 20 more people that want to speak. You can email them to me. I swear I'll share them with you. And I hope that you will vote for people who are about restoring excellence in our school. Our people who have been on sitting on this board for 10, 12, to 8, 10, and sometimes 12 years doing absolutely nothing except looking up for themselves. To the board, we are going to try to respect your time. Is, is, uh, you, I did talk to you. Uh, 
we, we stand together as a community, yeah. so that's what we're up here for. So I just want to know. Yeah, so Commissioner White and then uh, Mayor Johnny Vebel. But what we want to show you here, uh, we went out and got some of the, not the best, but we tried to get the a fair representation of all communities. We have pastors here, we have commissioners here, we have elected officials on the municipality side, and we have stakeholders. And so what we're doing here today is simply to have a simple conversation. We want to have a simple ask of you guys. As you know, we are not for closing schools. This team of people who stand here, we stand here unified to you as the board. We don't want to go to extremes. We don't want to go and get legal action. We don't want to do all these things. But if it comes down to it, we are here to say today that we are prepared. So, to Andrea Bonds, the president, to the board, to Dr. Thomas and your administration, we thank you for providing us this opportunity. We have three asks. Did you stop this process today? Stop this process today. After you stop this process, you call out and you do a call according to your policy 2.20. 220. The states, as an obligation as a board member, you have citizen advisory committees that will develop a strategic plan that speaks from at the board, the district of leadership, and at the school building leadership and show how we are going to change academics in this district. Yeah. The third thing is, we are no way looking at That's what we say. <laughs> so, you guys have got our petition. You know our phone numbers. We're not hiding, but we're going to work with you. And we can't be shut out. We can't be shut down. And we show they're going to be ran over. <laughs> Board. I came here to uh, rah rah, um, but as you guys see, it's not necessary for doing that. Um, Coleman, you came to my board meeting and got very personal because I stand to keep our community schools open. I never disrespected, I never disrespected anyone on this board, and to me that was very disrespectful. But the reason the rah rah won't come because prayer changes things. We still in that corner, and it's, and it's really a shame to say that we have to do this. We stood in that corner, and we prayed, and it touched my heart, too, so I won't come rah-rah. But I'm praying for all of you. You guys got hearts. You guys got hearts. And guess what? God is the maker of hearts, and he rules men's hearts. And we're praying that he moves on you guys' heart to change your mind and your decision about that Lincoln way. We're here to say, as a community, can, can I get everyone to up, stand up with me? Everyone stand up with me. No, I want them to count to three, no way, Lincoln way. One, two, three. No way, Lincoln way. 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 You've heard it from the community. You said yourself. All of the communities haven't spoken. We have Madison in here. We have Richland Park. We have Tindy Park. Chicago Heights Park Forest, Richland Park, and, and, and Olympia Field. All saying the same thing. No way, Lincoln Way. Stop this process and we're praying that God moves it from your heart. Use your conscience. Use your conscience. The community is speaking. Pirates and tyrants do what they want to do. Pirates and tyrants. Use your heart. Thank you, Madam President of the Board. I come to you this evening as Vice President of the Booster Club for Rich East High School of Athletics and Activities and a graduate from Rich East High School. Along with that, I'm also the Mayor of Villager Park Forest. And last night, And last night, we as a board unanimously voted a resolution that I'd like to read for you this evening. A resolution opposing the closure of Rich East High School. Whereas the community of Park Forest was incorporated in 1949 for military service personnel returning from World War II. And the founders envisioned a community where families could grow, 
future leaders could develop and lifelong relationships could blossom. And whereas Ridge East High School has been a part of the fabric of the Park Forest community since its construction in 1952 when the school first opened at Ridge Township High School, the flagship school with a storied history, the transition from Ridge Township High School to Ridge East took place among the opening of the sister schools Ridge Central and Ridge South. Whereas Park Forest residents have long supported their local Ridge East school both in civic spirit and at the referendum ballot box. On many occasions, Park Forest residents, alumni and otherwise, have beamed with rocket pride and rocket spirit. And whereas Rich East High School is a vital component of the Park Forest community, its long-standing presence boosts home value in the real estate market because there is a fundamental connection between home values and access to good local neighborhood schooling options. And whereas, with local schools and park forests are paramount importance in helping students learn the necessary components and skills to be successful in life, and they are instrumental in protecting the economic vitality of the community, along the lines, Rich East High School <coughs> is critically important to the success of the business corridor along Rich, along Sauk Trail, and in downtown Park Forest. And whereas students all across Park Forest should have access to solid local neighborhood schools such as Rich East that are complete with the resources, opportunities, and supports which make academic success possible and create strong ties among families, students, schools, and the community. And whereas access to a neighborhood high school such as Rich East should be available to Park Forest students without the need for busing. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and the board of trustees in the village of Park Forest, Cook, and Will counties strongly is opposed to the consideration compelled of the consideration of closing Rich East High School. Be it further resolved that School District 227 is hereby compelled to make every concerted effort to lo direct local taxpayer dollars to the maintenance, yes. infrastructure, yes. Right. and needs right. of Rich East yeah. 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 as to keep it open yeah. and vibrant. further resolved, I love that sentence, that the school district 227 is hereby compelled to make every concerted effort to direct local taxpayer dollars to the maintenance and infrastructure needs of Rich East as to keep it open, vibrant, thus mitigating the need for the youth of our community to have to travel outside of Park Forest and potentially outside of our township and outside of our county for a high quality school education. Good morning, I'm, I'm a 52 year resident of Ridge Township um, and the founder of Save Our Southland, which I created during one of the um, asinine slideshows. Um, and I've got some, some transparency issues, and, and uh, refusing to let the press in is just one of my frustrations. I'm not usually so aggressive, but I've been to five of these slideshows, and when you're giving these crazy numbers, and my first question is, $169 million in repairs, what have you been doing with our tax dollars? Are these buildings ready to be condemned? And I'm told, no, they're not. We went through and we tested every, every light bulb, every door, every whatever. I said, okay, I want to see the underlying reports. It took four meetings for them to realize that the underlying reports weren't compatible with the mobile version. I was a bank examiner. I was an auditor looked at the numbers they don't add up you know that 169 is 20 years worth of repairs they're comparing 20 years worth of repairs to 109 million which is simply the acquisition cost the demolition and some renovation how can you compare 20 years of repairs on three campuses for the one-time cost of the acquisition of that building that's irresponsible and besides that building is not big enough to hold everybody Come to find out on the tour, they're going to turn, or at least the idea is to be fair, 
They're going to turn Ridge South into a freshman building, and there's no data for that. So it's not big enough for everybody. So you need to add the cost of the repairs of Ridge South into that number, in addition to Lincoln Way North, in addition to the busing costs, 98% bus. The ISBE report card shows already that we are twice the state average on transportation costs. What are you thinking to go to 98%? And I'm sorry you are not an island. We have got parks and rec budgets that you are going to affect each of the mayor's budgets. You are going to affect the township road commissioners. And we need to be on that phone calling the other mayors. Thank you, Park Forest, for stepping up. We need to get a resolution from the other mayors. They are doing this with a loophole in the state law. We need to get Debbie Myers Martin and DeLuca to close that loophole. They were trying to backdoor this as a 1% tax increase using $105 million. It's going to be way more than that, and they aren't going to need to ask for our permission. So it's bill number HB 2378, call DeLuca, call Debbie Myers Martin. They unfortunately won't be able to join the Republicans with Pepper Construction, who use this in the western suburbs, to stick their taxpayers with $200 million in a high school that failed a referendum three or four times. So, but they can help us in January. So we need to slow this down, start over. No way, Lincoln way. You guys skipped the whole piece of why your enrollment has dropped. The school performance isn't great, and our taxes are too high. and start over, slow down, get better information, listen to the community. There are tons of new people, tons of new energy in this room that want better schools and want to work with you. So be, work with us. Don't lock our comments to 60 characters and three comments only and tell us that anything that we say in the room won't go back to the board because it wasn't put in the Chromebook. <laughs> Don't send out postcards that arrive two weeks later. Don't do mobile calls two hours before and say, oh, by the way, there's a meeting in two hours that your school might close. You don't close schools this way. Come on. You know better than this. Thank you, Mary. and Olympia Fields. This past summer, I asked at your town hall, had you all done any economic impact studies? Answer, no. I also asked if you had done any research to find out what the impact would be on the students. No. Highly irresponsible, I think, in my opinion. Now, let me help you with some of the answers to those questions. All of the research, Pew Institute, National Association of Realtors has shown that anytime boards have gone to move schools, close schools, the economic impact on those communities has been disastrous. Every single time, every city. Now, let me put some numbers to it because it's great to pray, but I believe without works is nothing. So, so here's some facts to put in your caps, okay? So on average, when schools leave communities, the average loss in property values are at minimum 10%. Collectively, within 227, the total equity that we all have in these homes is well over $2.6 billion. So, dear neighbors, are you all prepared to lose at minimum? You can do the math. $26 million in your equity collectively. And that's on the low end. So let's add that to your numbers when you're doing your projections. Questionable. The other concern is obviously and first and foremost, what we have been getting in terms of what your responsibility is to our students, our kids, and this community. That's who your responsibility goes to. Now, you cannot show me one example where closing a school has improved situations in the community. We talk about improving things for these students. What happens when they have to move, when the safety within the community drops? 
when a tax base to support what you're trying to do disappears. It disappears. Yeah. You're really calling into question for most of us what's really behind us. Now, what I'm asking, and I want to thank you all for at least waking me up. Okay. So, what I'm offering to you all, there needs to be a partnership. The only instances where communities have been able to deal with some of the real issues that we are facing has been when the board, educators, administrators, and the community. So, I want to Make sure that our residents, you all have to understand, this cannot be, oh, we're going to come together and just yell at this board. We all have a responsibility as parents and members of this community, one, to hold them accountable. Make sure that your neighbors are accountable as parents. Because quite honestly, these folks can't really do their job when you got parents that don't give a darn about what their kids are doing. So it needs to be a partnership between the community, yourselves, local businesses yes. and leaders. And I stand before you as well with this group to tell you that we are prepared to work with you to do that. I'm willing to bring my professional experience to the table to help develop these partnerships. The communities that have been able to bounce back from these types of situations have been the ones that can do that. But if you're not reaching out, if you're not sitting down with the members of the community to do that, if you're not being proactive about it, then it's not going to work. Thank so what you. What is your name? Howard White. Howard White? Yes. How are you doing tonight? Uh, thank you for having us, Andrea. Thank you for allowing all of the comments to be heard. Um, my name is Gina Davis Morales. I'm a resident of Park Forest and I'm a business owner in Madison that serves the uh, teenagers and middle schoolers and college athletes um, in the probably 10 mile radius around Madison. Um, my business has been supported by rich township families for nine years and we have we feel a commitment to this community and to the families especially to the kids that we see every day and talk to every day more than our own family members. Okay. Um, from what they tell us and what we hear from our parents, they're, they're not happy. I mean, I think it's clear from what you've heard today, what you've seen, that none of us are happy with these decisions. Um, as a business owner, I'm concerned that any kind of move to take more money out of Rich Township and place it over on Harlem is going to continue to move all the stores that have left Rich Township and went over to Harlem. Do we remember all the stores that used to be in Madison? And we know right where they're at now? Neither do I. So, um, you know, this is a major concern because it's a struggle to keep a business open in Rich Township as it is. And I'm going to rally uh, other business owners in Rich Township to come together because, again, as a part of Save Our Southland and as a resident and a business owner in the district and an advocate for kids, I'm here to work with you, not against you. We, we all should be here to work with them. We elected them, right? So let's work together. We need, we need your commitment to that because we're here and ready. And we've, we've spent countless hours delving into this research. I can't, I can't even explain to you how much Holly Finnerly has spent of her time to try to you know, come up with these reasons and all of the, the citing the facts and the research that has proven time and time again that this is not a good idea. I'm personally worried for my black and brown kids that I serve to go over there. They are not wanted. It's been voiced very publicly that they're not wanted. I get phone calls, and so does my husband, from them, from our students, to tell us about I, uh, situations that they get into because they're being profiled, including being arrested. I'm talking about honor students who are athletes in rich Project schools 
for being arrested under false charges. Okay? Who are being pushed out and yes, sure, spend your money over here, but then get the hell out. That's that's the kind of thing. Okay. So to put our kids in danger, because that's exactly what's gonna happen, is completely irresponsible. This option should have never been on the slideshow and it should come off immediately. And that's what I'm So many people have spoken and said a uh, number of things that I wanted to say. I was a social science major in college, and I realized that you know you spend a hundred dollars in a community once, it's a hundred dollars. You spend it two or three times because you shop at local businesses, then it's two, three hundred dollars. So the community is a lot wealthier. Um, yes, I would like to push for progressive taxation federally and statewide to push money into the rich township area that's very needy, instead of hitting poor people with property taxes, they lose their job, they lose their houses, it's not fair. I would like to encourage people to push their politicians for more progressive taxation statewide and federally, put money into this community, uh, and to keep the schools here like they said. You've got educational training, skills training in the community, and keeping the money circulating cash flow in the community, that's what makes the community better off. And I'm in favor, I'm a Florida resident, but I live in Rich Township, and I'm concerned about the situation here. That's my two cents. Thank you. All right. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, I'm the president of a housing cooperative in Park Forest since 1985. And I get elected every three years, and one of the reasons I do is I don't surprise my constituents. Um, and when people are involved with their homes or their children, uh, there's a sense that this snuck up on us. Secondly, I, I refer back to all of the references uh, about planning. In the late 1990s, a school district full of, of hubris and driven by administrators' dreams and board members' dreams, with the backing of bondsmen and architects and civil engineers, made a host of building decisions that brought the school district to the brink of failure. That was Lincoln Way 2000, Lincoln Way School District. They built, they, built, they built buildings and they made building decisions. And if you go back and look at the public discussions in that mixture, weren't discussions truly about school performance, student achievement, relationship with teachers, the role of administration costs versus teacher costs. It was driven by building people and building decisions. And they suffer to this day. Yeah. Now, building a building and tearing down a building without making the plans for what students are doing in those buildings, I think, is part of the air here. And since we're talking about 15 and 20 years, it just seems to me there would be nothing wrong with taking some time out, revisiting the achievement issues, and let's also have an honest discussion within that of those very special children that are served by the charter school that's in our district and not to the benefit of anybody else. So let's have an honest discussion about student achievement and budgets that then drives the decisions about buildings. And I can tell you this, I hope a lot of people get elected to office. The most thankless jobs in America are school board members. All right. Um, we need you to be your very best um, and, and to rise to the occasion. Thank you. And This is focused on, I thank you all for allowing me to speak. I want to be real quick. Um, I represent an organization called SEMA, Concerned Neighbors of Matheson. And we've been in existence for two and a half years. Volunteering, say of us. Um, I don't normally get out to a lot of other meetings. We had the school board out back in October. And we had 20 people in the meeting. 20. 
I don't know how long it takes for the community to understand that the problem is multi-level. I am so proud and so glad to hear that you're talking about transparency. Matson has spent $30 million in TIF money, another $16.7 million in what's called special tax dollars for economic development. And that's good, Will, but I ain't talking to you right now. <laughs> um, and so the point that I'm making, we're having a hearing next week. We, we are asking you all, because we're under attack. We are literally under attack. Yes, we are. And part of the problem is not you that are in the room. There are 15,860, whatever that number is, registered voters. Only 2,000 people voted. That's a major problem. How is it that, that we, this, let me make this announcement, because that's why I'm up here. The, Governor's, uh, Governor Pritzker's Property Tax Relief Task Force is holding a hearing. The chairperson of that is Chairperson Mary Flowers, State Representative. Keep her in your prayers. Her husband died Sunday. Um, and so this legislative hearing is, is scheduled for Wednesday, 25th at Matson Library. And, I, and let me explain something. We know at 6 o'clock the doors are open. We're asking the press to come. Because you guys have to understand the role that you play of not talking about the real issues in Matson and South Suburbs yeah. and what's going on east of I-57. Right. Because you're spending billions of dollars and you have nothing to show for it. Right. Right. We're overtaxed, our schools yeah. are closing, oh, and economic development has just disappeared. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking you to come out. No, can everybody speak? No. This is not a rah rah shout shout meeting on that, that particular date on the 25th. This meeting is about getting recorded by the Illinois Department of, of Revenues. They're coming to record this legislative hearing. They're coming to hear the facts from you to talk about the realities of our overtaxation. And my sister, Lakita, that's not your last name for me, Colquitt was at the meeting on Monday night. And she'll tell you that these are major issues. And if you don't stand up, South Suburban um, uh, area, all of us, and work together and find some remedies, these problems did not just start. No, right. We have been too silent. And you got to speak up. You got to demand answers. Yeah. You got to demand the best quality of education you can get. We deserve better. We, we have. In this community, we spend over $13 billion, excuse me, $1.3 billion in tax revenue, and you have nothing to show for it. Right. Sales tax dollars that are leaving your community right. going somewhere else. Yeah. And what I'm asking you all to do is come to this meeting, and come to this meeting as I take my seat. Come to this meeting, I got a preach for this, all right? <laughs> to this meeting, and even if you can't be heard, and you, everybody not going to get a chance to speak. Right. Just come and be, just to let the people know My you're name fed is up. I'm the executive director of Chamber 57, which is the Risk Council Chamber of Commerce. So I appreciate everyone here. I appreciate you all having this hearing. Um, I am pleading with you to reconsider even thinking about going to Lincoln Way. If you all know the history, when they were building that building, we were talking about kids from Madison actually attending that school in conjunction, and they fought tooth and nail. They didn't want us there. They didn't want us there then. They don't want us there now. Why would we purposely send our kids to be over-policed when we know that's what's going to happen? Why would we purposely, if you all close all of these schools and send our kids there, what's going to happen to economic development? As a chamber, Europe will kill the businesses we're trying to bring into the state. Why, as we bring, when we, call, when we call businesses, the first thing they look at are schools. That's why people move to home with Foster. Now, here's some, here's, here's what I know. At other boards, when things go bad, if, if you can't change people, you change people. So, I'm a firm believer to tell you that if you all go out, go through this, I promise you it will be your last position as a 
board member of this yeah. district. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not it's not a threat, but it means too much. This is about the it's kids. Right? I understand, I understand right. the economics of what you guys are saying, but we got to come to the table together. Yeah. I'm not here to argue with you, I'm here to help. I'm willing to help you find additional money. You know, we can do private, public opportunities. Let's come to the table and work together to make this happen. But we cannot send our kids over there to fail. And that's exactly what we're doing. And parents, we got to be responsible too. I went to all three schools for the, uh, what is it called? College and career fair. Some of our kids don't know how to act, so we got to be responsible as well. So we're all in this room accountable to our kids and our community. And as, a, as, the, as, a, as the economic de development director and as the executive director of the chamber, it's my responsibility to help our community bring business in. It's really, really, really hard with these type of programs. It's really, really hard with these conversations, with people going on radio down in our community. I don't care what's going on in Flossmore, you typically don't hear about it. There's a lot of issues that go on, but you don't hear about it. Every little thing that happens in Matt's and Olympia Fields, it's all over TV, it's all over the field. We have to stop that. So I'm asking everybody, if you don't have anything good to say, say it in this meeting, but don't take it out of here. Because you're hurting your own community when you do that. If we talk about how bad these board members are in the public, guess what's going to happen? Everybody's going to agree with you and not come. So I'm asking you all to help me, help us, and help this board by us being here, not just today, but every day. So whenever you have a meeting, call me. Let me know. Send an email out. You have my number. You have my number. Please, let us help you. All right, but please don't make this, mis don't make this decision. I'm begging you. Do not make this decision. It will absolutely kill not only our kids, but our economic development for the next 20 years. Thank you. I'm here, haven't been here in a while, but I've been watching online because I've been extremely busy. But I had to come tonight. One reason why I had to come is because I went online and I looked. I missed a lot of those meetings on how much it was going to cost us to rebuild, I'm sorry, to, um, to redevelop our school. So I started looking online at the administrator. Superintendent, $286,105. We have three assistant superintendents that each make over $100,000. One makes $140,000, another makes $165,000, and the third one was not listed on your website, which is a violation. You have five directors. Now, we have 3,000 students in this district, or a little shot, under 3,000 students. There's no way wow. in any district with less than 3,000 students, we need one superintendent, almost 300,000, not including the benefits that he gets, okay. the uh, TRS that he's receiving, any annuities, we're paying his medical, we're paying his life, we're paying vision. So I'll just say $300,000 salary. Five directors. Why are there five directors? You got three buildings. The curriculum department has one, two, three, four, five people an assistant superintendent, a director of curriculum, a coordinator, a CTE coordinator. You've got all these people, and not including all of the secretaries. The business office has an assistant superintendent, a director of athletics, not including the secretary, and the accounts payable and the accounts receivable person. I'm sorry, that's a human resource. I need one of them jobs. Now we talk about, oh, and I'm sorry, student services, which you all know that is my dearest, because I'm the director of student services. There's only a director. Technology has a director. Building and grounds has a director. Food service has a supervisor and two managers. But we're talking about taking our children from our community and moving them because we don't have revenue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was hilarious when I started looking at numbers. 
I didn't even touch on the buildings. We've got three buildings. Each building has a principal and an assistant principal. Two, misuse of taxpayers' dollars. But we want to take our children and move them somewhere else and increase our transportation, because I didn't look up transportation, but I will look up that one for the next week. Because I know we're spending over millions of dollars on, on transportation right now. So if we transport our children all the way over to Lincoln Way, who, when I moved into this community, Lincoln Way promised us that some of our children from Madison could attend that school when they were building. See, some of you all don't know about that because you weren't on this board. And when they finished, they said, under no circumstance can our children, even if we say McKinney Vento, and everybody know that gets you in the district. They said, under no circumstances can our children come to their school. So I say to Lincoln Way, under no circumstances can my tax dollars be According to the rankings, Harvard is ranked number two in the nation yeah. with the University of Chicago and Yale tied at number three. What all three have in common is a commitment to academic excellence and providing amazing educational opportunities for all students. They do not need shiny new buildings to attract students. And honestly, they never have. Their academic reputations do it for them. When it comes to K-12, it is the same. People move to certain areas based on the ed educational opportunities that schools can provide for their children. That is where the focus for how to solve the enrollment problem, the decreased enrollment problem in 227 needs to be, on strengthening the academic offerings and rigor, not on new buildings. We can have the newest state-of-the-art high school in all of America, but if this board does not attend to the quality of the educational programs, and restore the community's trust, enrollment will continue to drop, students will be ill-prepared for what comes next, whether that's employment, college, or the trades. Don't just react to the symptoms. Fix the root of the problem. Focus on strengthening the educational program for students and rebuilding trust with the community before you make any decision to close schools, because I would love to see all three of them stay open. The first part of your oath of office had you swear to protect the assets of Rich 227. Now, emotional attachment and nostalgia has its place, but I also understand there was a time when an asset becomes a liability. Before you decide that any of our current schools are no longer assets but liabilities that should close, I would like you to continue to keep options one and two on the table. Funding exists in Pritzker's uh, new capital plan to help with the maintenance and repair of schools. Let's wait and see what grants or programs can help mitigate the cost of repairs and upgrades to the building before you decide to close the repairs. The oath of office also, you also swore to, states, I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. Now in the previous meeting, what I saw, the board made a majority decision last month that some members do not agree with. But keeping the board from conducting its business, which can only be done in a publicly called meeting, to argue over who presides over the meeting, 
That is not constructive, it violates your oath, and is extremely disrespectful to every person in attendance and who are watching my home. I know this board has tough decisions to make, and it's my hope that as you discuss um, the facility options, that you keep in mind the input and concerns from your constituents. I hope that this board and audience can also request a re or respect the request by President Bonds to maintain to maintain decorum in this meeting so that the board can discuss this matter without disruption. Every person here and watching online needs and deserves to be able to hear what each of our elected board members think of our of the various facility options and what they believe is best for our community students. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Robert Kolkebeck. I'm from Park Forest. I've been living there since 1992. Um, my first comment is just a sincere wish that everybody on board can work out leadership issues as, in a, a way that's suitable. And, my, and uh, my not so sincere wish, or it's a half joke, that you, you um, put this uh, comment but it's relevant to what's going on. There was a, a um, discussion about uh, the uh, attendance at various uh, continuing education for board meetings, for board members, and uh, various seminars. And that's very important. And I appreciate the desire to do that. And I, I support that desire to do that. There is an exception, though. I'm to talk to people in other districts who've got the same difficulties that we're experiencing in ours. And uh, I, I, would, I sincerely hope that the seminars that are, you're attending are not how to influence your district uh, residents to support options for hundreds of millions of dollars spending and new buildings that they never initiated on their own, but that you managed to present as something for them to choose from a menu of limited options. I've gone over some of the repair estimates and Holly brought, brought some attention to that too. The one that just struck me, I was out of this world. $25 million to repair the electricity at Rich East and electrical repairs. There were similar high estimates or everything else. My uh, recommendation is that given the upcoming uh, census issues, 2020 we have the census, given the problems that experts have uh, projecting population growth or decrease, Given the problems that experts seem to have at finding a way to spend money on buildings, whether the population increases or, or decreases, I uh, strongly encourage you to hold off, stick to repairs until after the 2020 census, stick to repairs after your 2019 audit is completed. Because that might come about, uh, that's, it's not unusual for take a long time, but that will probably come about the same time as the 2020 census is completed. Um, I, I brought up issues before, I, I sent messages to you, so I won't go into that right now. Um, thank you very much for the time. And I, you know what, I want to say, I half expected somehow, given the money involved, hundreds of millions of dollars, that this audience is going to be full of people that were backing the plans to, to try to raise as much in bonds that they can suck out of this community for your plans. That did not happen. We have a community support to try to keep things in line and to exercise judgment when experts present their ideas. At the national level, we've had experts present plenty of bad ideas. And your children and our Young adults pay for that dearly. Thank you. And, um, but now I'd like to address something that goes beyond dollars and um, territory. And I need to ask the question, what is the motive of Lincoln Way to want our students? What is their motive? 
why do they want our students going to their school? Part of the reason is money again for them because they do not have the number of minority students that we have. So guess what? Our minority students, black, brown, Asian, whoever it is, will give them a boost for their school district, for their money, and for their prestige which is what's at hand for them. Where does that put us? Where does that put our children in terms of their perspective on their self-worth? Because if you think high school students don't understand these things, they understand the social ramifications better than we do as adults. If we can all look back and think about how we felt attending high school, if we had to go out of our communities, and there were, and I'm sure that there, maybe there's people in this audience that have been bused to their school. What has it done to their self-esteem? What has it done to, to their ability to and attend I feel college? Proud tonight that members of the community, my neighbors, and the people that are in the room, one of which offered me my job 17 years ago, who has come back retired because Richie's is just that special place. We have two former collegiate basketball coaches in the audience that have come back to mentor our students and left that world uh, to join us here. I also speak because I don't want our community to think that our teachers uh, aren't invested in these choices. We are. They're here tonight behind me. One of the mistakes we've made is we don't yell from the mountaintops enough about our alum. Six of my daughter's basketball team still pay, play collegiate basketball and were tutored by some of the people behind us. They were also part of the best girls team in school history. And in 2006, the former girls basketball team that was formerly the best continued to mentor those young women and they still today. And the person says, well, you know, that's Rick East. And I said, look, check this out. I live in Park Forest. When my roof begins to leak, I replace my roof. There are not mice in my house. It's just one of the only exterminators in the of the board. So for the majority of the board, the majority of the board, the condition of East has been long going. Okay. But when are you going to start putting money in Rick East? If you don't want to put money in Richie's, please take my taxes out. Okay. And then I can then use it for a school that yeah. will, yeah. not even for my kids. My kids are gone. Right. But for my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because the more people who want to go to school in my neighborhood, the less vacant homes I have. Right. Yeah. Last, point. Last point. This board keeps flipping and flopping. And so when you all as a community wonder why we don't move forward, whether we have a superintendent or not, because the board keeps flipping and flopping. Yeah, right. It's more personal issues on this board yeah. than I've ever, ever witnessed. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. Many of you who are on the board, I'm looking at the floor now. Many of you are on the board, you're here because you're angry. Yeah. You're angry about who did what to somebody in your family. Yeah. Many people on the board that we elect never had kids in our district ever. They just retired here. And then they get on the board and wonder why you're not having what you feel to be happening on the board. It's a recurring thing over and over again. And the bad thing about it is it's our children that are impacted.